lying incompetence will surely get fired. Saying that, senior manager James abruptly hung up the phone. On the day of an important meeting, while I was on my way to work, a traffic accident occurred right in front of me, and I ended up being late to the office because I was helping with the rescue efforts. When I told James about it over the phone, he just laughed and said, don't lie to me. No matter how many times I insisted it was the truth, James refused to believe me and told me I was fired. After hanging up, I couldn't help but mutter to myself, lying incompetence get fired. Who's getting fired? At that moment, a group of men appeared. This was the beginning of my journey, overcoming numerous challenges and meeting heroes along the way. My name is Michael. I'm a young office worker in my third year at the company, having joined right after graduating from college. By the third year, you start to get assigned more significant tasks, and I was beginning to find real satisfaction in my work. Recently, I managed to buy my own car, and commuting in it has become a source of pride. Every time I look at my car, I can't help but grin, thinking about how my diligent savings paid off. Now, shopping trips and drives are my weekend highlights. I've been getting along well with my colleagues, and overall, I feel fulfilled. However, there's one problem in my otherwise content life. Every day, I endure harassment from James. From petty harassment like not giving me the documents distributed to everyone in the department or excluding me from the gifts James brings back from business trips, to more serious issues like him answering calls meant for me and saying, unfortunately, Michael isn't here right now. He tends to slack off a lot, right in front of me. Such actions have been seriously hindering my work, and I'm honestly fed up with it. Incidentally, this harassment from James isn't just within our department. It's targeted specifically at me across the entire company, and no other employee faces anything like this. Why me? I vented to my peer, Daniel. He reassured me, saying, It's because you're excellent at what you do. Don't let it get to you, but honestly, the constant harassment was wearing me down. Despite the ongoing issues with James, my work days continued. So, I set off for work in my car as usual today. Since today was crucial, I left home earlier than usual and drove cautiously. I had prepared for the forecasted snow by fitting my car with snow chains the day before. I cherish my car and want to take good care of it. As I was driving smoothly, I noticed a car ahead of me. It was what you'd call a luxury foreign-made vehicle. I thought to myself, nice, I'd love to get a car like that next time. It looks comfortable to ride in and fun to drive. Just as I was daydreaming, the luxury car suddenly skidded. What? I exclaimed and almost simultaneously, the car crashed into a lamppost with a loud bang. I quickly pulled over to the side of the road, jumped out of my car, and rushed towards the damaged vehicle. When I ran over to the car, I saw a man in the driver's seat. The airbag seemed to have deployed properly. I managed to open the driver's side door and asked the man, are you okay? Then, I heard a faint, uh, from him. It seemed like he might have hit his head. He appeared to be injured. Looking around, I noticed there were no pedestrians, likely due to it being earlier in the morning than usual. There was no one passing by. I quickly went back to my car to grab my cell phone and called for an ambulance and the police. After explaining the situation and urging them to hurry, I decided to administer first aid to the driver. I have some basic knowledge of first aid from regularly attending courses in my neighborhood. That said, I'm just an amateur, so I can only do basic things. But it's better to do something than nothing at all. Can you hear me? I've called for an ambulance. I shouted while tapping the driver's shoulder, and he let out a weak ca. Just to be safe, I checked his pulse at the carotid artery and was relieved to find a steady beat. He seemed to be conscious. Moving him carelessly might not be wise especially since he appears to have injured his head. 
Laying him down on the snow-covered road wasn't an option either, and it would be difficult to move him by myself. Thinking he should at least stay warm, I went back to my car to grab a blanket I had and covered the man in the driver's seat with it. That's when I noticed he seemed to have a small cut on his head from the glass. So, I decided to press my handkerchief against the wound. I remembered to be careful not to come into direct contact with his blood while doing so. Soon after, I heard the sound of sirens in the distance, and shortly thereafter, an ambulance and a police car arrived. The man was safely transferred from his car to the ambulance. One of the paramedics asked me, are you the one who called? Would you mind accompanying us to the hospital? Concerned about the driver's condition, I readily agreed with the of course and boarded the ambulance. Upon arrival at the hospital, the driver was immediately treated. Though he had sustained serious injuries, I was relieved to hear his life was not in danger. My relief was short-lived. Soon after, a person in a police uniform approached me, saying, You're the one who called, right? Can you explain what happened? Leading to a questioning session. By the time everything was concluded, it was almost noon, with the sun fully risen. I had left home early for today, and then I realized I hadn't contacted my office at all. Oh no, today of all days, I need to call them, my phone. I searched my pockets only to find my phone was missing. Why, I definitely had it this morning when I made the emergency call. I racked my brain and remembered leaving it in my car when I went to get the blanket. And my car was still parked on the side at the accident site. The hospital wasn't too far from the accident scene. I decided to hurry back to the site. Actually, there was a reason I left home earlier than usual today. It was the day of an important meeting at the company. A new project had started a few weeks ago, and I was one of its members. Incidentally, James was also a part of the team. Today was the day we were to present our directions for the project. I had prepared the necessary documents, but they, along with my laptop, were all in my car. Although I had saved the same files on my office computer, I had found a mistake in them, which I intended to correct early this morning at the office. I regretted leaving everything behind and now my phone was in the car too. I should have worn my smart watch that syncs with my phone. That way, I wouldn't have missed any notifications. With these thoughts, I finally made it back to the scene. My car was still parked on the side. I was relieved it hadn't been towed. I had locked it, so I quickly unlocked it to find my phone and work bag still there, untouched. Relieved that nothing was stolen, I was shocked the moment I saw my phone. The sheer number of missed calls and messages on WhatsApp was overwhelming. This is bad. Sweating profusely, I hastily tapped the screen and called my office, only for James to answer. Hello. Ah, uh, it's Michael. James, it's Michael. I was so flustered I introduced myself twice. Ah, uh, it's you. So you finally decided to skip out, or and on the day of an important presentation, no less. It's not like that. There's a reason, actually. I proceeded to explain everything about the accident. And that's why I left my phone in the car. At that moment, I heard James let out a chuckle. Ha ha. Who's going to believe such a story? As if an accident would just happen to occur right in front of you. Just admit you were slacking off. Frustrated by James's condescending tone, I insisted. It's the truth. Please believe me. Yeah, lies. Ever heard the saying, liar today, thief tomorrow. It was clear he wasn't going to believe me. As I was despairing, he said, by the way, about today's presentation, I used the documents you saved on the company computer, presented them under my name. Thanks for the hard work. What? He presented my work under his name. Yeah, I hadn't prepared anything, so it was convenient to use yours. You didn't show up, and we couldn't reach you, so it worked out perfectly. Kill two birds with one stone, right? How is that a good thing? 
I couldn't help but ask back. So you were saying you stole my work? I just made use of it, and it's been decided we're going with the direction of your documents. So, as it stands, those documents were made by me, which means you are no longer needed. Laughing loudly, James added, lying incompetence get fired right away, too bad for you, and then he hung up. James's words echoed in my mind as the call ended. Lying incompetence, get fired. Could I really be getting fired? I stood there, stunned. Then I heard a voice from behind, who's being called a liar? Turning around, I saw a man wearing sunglasses standing there. He had a strong build and was dressed in a black suit. Um, who might you be? Could this man be part of the Mafia? I was inwardly terrified by this sudden encounter. Sorry for the suddenness, but I heard you help my brother out. Need a hand, he said with a sly grin. Brother, as I stood there puzzled, four more men appeared behind him. Among them, one stood out, a gray-haired man wearing a suit with a distinctive pattern, radiating an aura far different from the other three. I realized I needed to explain why I missed today's meeting and headed to the company. Upon arriving at the company and heading to a certain location, I unexpectedly ran into James along the way. Seeing me, James said, what are you doing here? Didn't I tell you you were fired? So I retorted, it's not yet certain whether I'm fired. I'll say it again, I was late because I was helping with an accident and went to the hospital, then explained everything to the police. It wasn't intentional. James just laughed again, like I said. You could come up with a better lie. Nobody is going to believe you. I even submitted your resignation for you. HR should be processing it by now. Seeing James's smirking face, I realized it was pointless to argue with him. I decided to give up on talking to him. James, that's enough. After saying just that, I continued towards my destination. I heard from behind, hey, HR isn't that way but it didn't matter to me since I wasn't heading to HR. I reached my destination and knocked on the door. Come in, I heard from inside and opened the door. I apologize for the long wait. Thank you for your patience, I said to the people inside. No problem at all, was the reply. There sat Mr. Anderson, the company president, the man in the distinctive suit I had seen before, and two well-built men in black suits. Then James followed me in, saying, Michael, HR isn't that way. As I wondered why he thought I was going to HR, Mr. Anderson said calmly, James, I was about to call you too. Come in with Michael. Mr. Anderson, why is Michael in the president's office? James was surprised, but Mr. Anderson ignored him. Come on in, he urged, and James and I entered. Mr. Anderson then said, Michael, I've been hearing about you. You helped Ryan, didn't you? Ryan's someone I've known since he was young. When Alex told me Ryan had an accident, I was quite shocked. Mr. Anderson continued. Then the man laughed heartily, but that's my boy, surviving an accident, and it's all thanks to you, Michael. Seeing James clueless at my side, I decided to fill him in. James, this man is Alex, the boss of the White Tiger family. As I said this, James stepped back, the White Tiger family. The White Tiger family is a well-known mafia in this region. This man is the boss of the mafia. He's the one who saved my son this morning, a lifesaver for my son's life. I heard about it from Alex. Michael, your response was admirable. No, it was nothing. I just happened to have the knowledge. Besides, it's a driver's duty to help the injured, I said, feeling somewhat embarrassed. Alex then said, you've been saying that all along. I think you should be more proud. Not many people can stay calm in such a situation. I've seen similar things in the past. Alex, maybe save those old stories for another time. They might be a bit too much for the younger folks, Mr. Anderson said with a wry smile. As the three of us were talking, Alex suddenly asked, so, Mr. Anderson, why is Michael getting fired? 
James, who had been quiet until then, stepped forward as if this was his moment. Allow me to explain. This Michael, he not only missed an important meeting today but also didn't prepare the presentation materials. It's only natural for someone like that to be fired, don't you think? He started. Moreover, he's always disrespectful to his bosses and acts arrogantly just because he can do a little work. Mr. Anderson might not know much about Michael, but he's the reason for the poor relationships at work. James ran it all at once. The room fell silent at his outburst. James had a smug look as if he had made his point. There's a limit to making things up. I don't recall ever behaving like that. What is he talking about? Is James introducing himself? As I was thinking this, Mr. Anderson said, James, was that an introduction about yourself? Uh. James, not expecting Mr. Anderson to say that, was left speechless. I almost burst out laughing, realizing Mr. Anderson shared my thoughts. Actually, James has been a frequent topic at the Compliance Committee meetings. We've received reports of him harassing a male employee, causing disruptions to work, and there have been complaints about his inappropriate behavior towards female employees, disturbing the workplace harmony. Mr. Anderson continued, It's completely unfounded. But we've received written complaints, and there was an incident where you didn't pass a call for Michael in front of him. There's witness testimony, and we even have videos. Videos. Given the severity of the issue, someone from your department submitted them. I was appalled when I saw them, Mr. Anderson said. I was shown the video later, and it was perfectly captured, likely by my colleague Daniel from the same department. Of course, I thank Daniel profusely. Good peers are invaluable. James, chagrined at being called out by Mr. Anderson, could only grunt in frustration. Uh. Seizing the moment, I decided to mention what James had said over the phone earlier. By the way, the presentation James gave today was actually prepared by me. He himself said he used it. James, taken aback, glared at me and yelled, Don't spout nonsense. You have no proof. True, I didn't record that moment, but I do have proof that I prepared those documents. Proof. Yes. The proof is on my laptop here. It contains the PowerPoint for the presentation content. Isn't it strange for James to claim he made it when it's on my laptop? That's because you stole it from me. That's not true. How could that be? I retorted immediately. However, that's weak evidence, Alex said, and Mr. Anderson nodded in agreement. James gave me a look as if to say, see. Right. But actually, there was a mistake in the documents I made. A mistake. I took my laptop out of my bag, turned it on, and opened the PowerPoint presentation. Then, I showed the part where the mistake was made. I accidentally wrote James's position incorrectly on slide 17. Surely, you wouldn't make such a mistake about your own position, right? What? The slide read, under the direction of James, the department head. Besides, you wouldn't write about yourself in such a manner. I did it because it was for an internal presentation. Haha, <laughs> imagine writing that about yourself. Alex laughed, and James's face turned beet red. I noticed the mistake yesterday and was planning to correct it. Surely, James didn't present it with that mistake. No, I did present it. It was Mr. Anderson who spoke. I was at that meeting today, and in the middle of James's presentation, he referred to himself as department head. He laughed it off as a minor mistake, and everyone laughed along. I see. That was something Michael had created. That makes sense. Realizing there was no escape, James's complexion grew increasingly pale. Mr. Anderson, James told me that liars get fired. Am I going to be fired? Mr. Anderson shook his head and said, there's no reason to fire you. If anyone is to be fired, it would be James. The man who offered his help, saying, need a hand, turned out to be a soldier of a white tiger family. The person involved in the accident was Ryan, 
the son of the boss of the White Tiger family. When the family was notified of the accident and rushed to the hospital, they were told, someone helped him, and they found me at the accident scene based on that information. When they approached me, I found myself asking, I'm being thought of as a liar, could you please tell James that I'm not lying? Looking back, I realize it might not have made much sense to ask that. Alex then said, is that all you need? There must be more. You saved my son's life, anything you need, money or otherwise. The most important thing to me right now is that, I exclaimed. I like your spirit. Whether I'm a manager, department head, or president, I'll speak on your behalf. Let's go to your company, he declared. By responding with a yes, it was decided that Alex and his entire group would accompany me to my company. When asked which company I worked for and showed my business card, Alex exclaimed, that's Bob's company. Bob is the name of our president, Mr. Anderson. Are you familiar with him? Yay, an old friend of mine. This will be quick. I'll talk to him. And with that, Alex immediately called Mr. Anderson. Upon answering, Alex informed him that the employee who saved his son's life is about to be fired from your company. It turned out Mr. Anderson and Alex were indeed old friends, and they were quickly allowed into the president's office. I also headed to the company in my car and went straight to the president's office. James was called in, and thanks to them, I was spared from being fired. Alex is incredible. The power of a boss. Alex, thank you so much. After James left, I thanked Alex again. What are you talking about? We should be thanking you. But Michael, are you sure you don't want anything in return? Yes, I only did what was natural. Even if Ryan wasn't from the White Tiger family, I would have helped anyone injured. Please don't worry about a reward. But. Actually, I was once saved by a lifeguard when I almost drowned at sea. He told me, if you ever see someone in trouble due to an accident or disaster, help them. That's how you can repay me. That's become my motto. And what I did was in line with that belief. Mr. Anderson, moved to tears, said, Michael, you're truly inspiring. Alex remarked, I knew you were the man I acknowledged. Interestingly, the two men accompanying Alex also seemed to be tearing up. You're too pure-hearted, they said, but I don't think I'm that special. I'm content just living by my principles so I don't need a reward. However, Alex still seemed hesitant. The prospect of a grand gesture of gratitude was honestly a bit intimidating. Then, just like the lifeguard told me, if you come across anyone in trouble from now on, please help them on my behalf. That's all I ask. Understood, I promise. I'll make sure my soldiers and Ryan do the same. With those words, Alex made a promise to me James was jealous because you're competent and well-liked. Daniel from HR informed me. James had inexplicably submitted my resignation, leaving everyone puzzled. What surprised me the most was that James actually submitted my resignation letter. It seems James had been bad-mouthing me to Mr. Anderson and the department heads, scheming to get me fired by claiming such an employee was not needed. Ultimately, his plan backfired, and instead, he was reprimanded by Mr. Anderson for his unacceptable behavior towards subordinates and was also in trouble with other bosses. Despite James pleading not to be fired due to his past actions and the maliciousness of his behavior, it was decided that he was the one who would be let go from the company. With James gone, the office became a more pleasant place for everyone he had troubled, including me. A month after James's departure, I was thriving at work, free from his harassment. Ryan, Alex's son, was discharged from the hospital two weeks after the accident and has since returned to his normal life. Mr. Anderson and I were invited to Ryan's recovery celebration, where the White Tiger family treated us to a generous feast. Since then, I started meeting regularly with Alex and his crew, feeling like I had made friends who were older than me. I even began going out for drinks occasionally with Mr. Anderson. 
One day, our area experienced continuous snowfall, leading to a significant accumulation. It's rare for our region to get much snow, but this year, a severe cold wave caused unprecedented snowfall. The road in front of our company experienced a massive traffic jam due to the snow, with many vehicles stuck. This snow kept falling around our company, piling up more and more. I thought it would be good if we could at least clear the snow around our company when Mr. Anderson appeared with a large shovel. Mr. Anderson. Hey, Michael, work's not going anywhere with the snow, so I thought I might as well clear it, he said. I'll help too. I grabbed a shovel from inside and started clearing snow around the company. Seeing Mr. Anderson and me, other employees began to show up, saying, I'll help too, and we all started clearing snow together. While we were shoveling, I noticed the car stuck on the road in front of us. The drivers must be having a tough time, unable to move because of the snow. I decided to make a gesture by providing some refreshments to those stuck. I bought a large amount of sandwiches and hot coffee from a nearby convenience store and distributed them to the people in their cars. Thank you. Let's all hang in there. We encouraged each other like this. Although this was all I could do, I hoped it helped, even if just a little. Ideally, we would clear the jam, but due to the snow, public transport had been down since the morning, and very few employees could make it to work. We were already doing our best just clearing the snow around our company. As we pondered what to do next, an unfamiliar sound approached. What's that? An earthquake, I thought, but then bulldozers and excavators appeared. Several of them arrived in a convoy. Is this a raid attack? I blurted out, perhaps influenced by my recent interactions with Alex and his group. Michael, we've come to help shouted Alex, disembarking from a bulldozer. Alex, we're here too. Peeking out from other bulldozers and excavators were Ryan and the soldiers of a white tiger family. Why are you here? I asked in surprise. Alex, you're late, Mr. Anderson said with a laugh. Sorry, sorry, it's been a while since I've driven one, so I'm a bit rusty. Alex laughed heartily. Bob contacted me and we thought we'd come to help with the snow removal, brought whatever vehicles we thought might be useful for the job. Excavators and bulldozers, really? I was surprised they even had such equipment. We've also called some acquaintances from around here, so more people should be arriving. Let's see if we can clear this traffic jam. We received reassuring words. The group Alex called included young women, muscular men, and men my age, among others. A diverse crowd had gathered. These people are my acquaintances and employees from our businesses. I've asked the owner of that restaurant over there to prepare some warm food, Alex explained. A young lady who looked like a nightclub hostess exclaimed, Alex, I have a bulldozer license, so I can drive it. Alex, I can lift cars, so just tell me what to do said a muscular guy. I wondered how Alex had made such diverse acquaintances. Then, Mr. Anderson, Alex, the local residents, and I discussed and decided to work together on snow removal. We resumed our efforts with the goal of clearing the traffic jam on the road in front of us. We used shovels and snow dumps where bulldozers and excavators couldn't reach. A nearby store happened to have snow dumps. A woman who owned a cafe said, I don't have a snow dump, but I have a dust pan and used it for shoveling snow, while a man who worked at a hostess bar used buckets for snow removal. People from various industries cooperated. Gradually, the snow situation stabilized, and with the help of bulldozers, excavators, and other equipment, we finally cleared the traffic jam on the road. Watching the cars gradually start moving again allowed me to finally breathe a sigh of relief. Good job, Michael. Alex praised me. Thank you. It was all thanks to you rallying everyone around. I responded. It was my turn this time since you helped Ryan, 
I just called on the soldiers, friends, and acquaintances, and they were willing to help. I haven't forgotten our promise. In the Mafia, we take promises and honor very seriously," he said with a laugh. Life in the area soon returned to normal. Later, a driver who had been stuck during the traffic jam made a special trip to our company to say, you all were like heroes with the food and assistance you provided that day. Hearing that was incredibly gratifying. But the heroes weren't just us. The White Tiger family, Alex, and the people he gathered were also heroes. After the traffic jam was cleared, the people Alex had gathered seemed to have vanished without a trace. They must have returned to their daily lives. Even though they were strangers to me, the fact remains that we all cooperated. The people from the White Tiger family were the same. We're Mafia, so we can't exactly be in the limelight. Let's just say you guys did the rescuing, I was told. So, the people stuck in the traffic jam probably think we were the only ones who helped. But that's not the case. There were many other heroes there too. I'll never forget that. After that snowy day, I had no further contact with Alex and his group. Alex said, it wouldn't be good for a young man with a future to be known for being close to the Mafia like us. It's best if we end our association here. Indeed, me being close to Mafia members might not sit well with society. But parting ways with people I have grown close to felt quite sad. Alex and Mr. Anderson were old friends, but they hadn't met in years for that reason. I'm going to miss you. I admitted honestly. Yeah, I will too, but this is the line we draw, Alex replied with a sad smile. The fun times I had with Alex, Ryan, and everyone from the White Tiger family are unforgettable. Ryan then told me, Michael, anyone who helps someone in trouble can be their hero. Meeting you made me realize that, now, be someone's hero is our motto in the White Tiger family. I never imagined that a simple act of helping someone could lead to so much gratitude and so many new connections. Take care, Michael. You too. Take care. With that, I parted ways with the White Tiger family. Since then, my involvement with the people of the White Tiger family has ceased. Though I no longer meet them, I'm sure they are all doing well. I am well aware that they were the heroes on that snowy day. Afterward, I was promoted and given the position of assistant manager. Apparently, it's the first time someone my age has held this position within the company. Based on your character and work performance, we want you to keep up the good work. Mr. Anderson personally encouraged me, which motivated me to work even harder. If someone is in trouble and I can help, I will. I want to continue to be able to do such natural acts of kindness. I vow to live up to the coolness of those people from that day and to become someone's hero again.